All right. Should be good to go. Awesome. We're up off the ground here. Uh, back doing some live stuff, uh, which is great. We've been kind of looking forward to getting back to that. Um, you know, obviously over the holidays, everybody's taking a bit of a break, um, but it'd be good to get back to some of the stuff now in the off season, um, you know, and, and get back to doing some weekly content that way. Just some housekeeping stuff uh, before we get started with Coach Chapdelaine. Thanks, Coach, for, for being on here again. I know we are connected, you know, over Twitter a couple of days ago. And one thing I always tell people is like, reach out to coaches, whether they're this side or, are, you know, the Kane side of the border, the other side of the border. It's a free um, clinic. You'd be blown away by, you know, by people's willingness to share what they got. So when I had a, I had a coach, uh, Canadian coach the other day say, hey, like how, you know, I'm, I'm coaching this JV team and I'm done playing, but, you know, I don't necessarily want to do what I did as a player. Like what, what would you, what's your advice for finding, you know, resources around playbooks or concepts or teaching or whatever. I just said like, reach out to people that you, that you think are, uh, you know, smart or that you've seen their offense or defense and like it. And, you know, I, I found, especially, you know, here in Canada, the coaching community is really, really open. And, um, and we were saying kind of this before we got on is a lot of really, really great coaches. So excited to be doing this. I did feel kind of bad because as a, a guy that coached and played offense originally and is now coaching defense, I've, I've found my mind on the defensive side of the ball. And I was, I was scrolling through, you know, what we've posted on three down kind of in the last six months, I was like, I don't think I've talked about a passing concept since like September, you know, so this worked out perfectly coach that, uh, that Good. one of our, our fellow friends on Twitter kind of linked us up yes. over some of the stuff that you got. You had Coach already Butler. Yes, shout out. Yeah, for sure. Big, big time follower uh, and, and subscriber of our channel. So um, we're going to jump right into that in a second. I got my notepad ready to go. I'm, gotcha. I'm really looking forward to it. A couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, if you can like the video or comment anything on it, uh, it helps more people find it. So, you know, we're always we're always trying to win against the algorithm and, and that helps us a little bit. So wherever you're watching from, even if you just throw that in there um and uh or any questions i'll be watching the chat so whatever questions you have for coach um you know i say all the time why why are you not ask a question now that you're just going to try and google tomorrow and figure out so ask a question ask any questions you have as we go through this i'll keep my eye on the chat um if you don't already it's always helpful to us if you subscribe click the bell for notifications um that's not something i've pushed super hard but i've done a little more research on youtube um check the bell for notifications it's great you can always like any other notification on your phone you can always get rid of it and come watch us later if you can't watch us live, but it's always nice to know when we're going live. And sometimes, you know, we have stuff like this that I didn't know we were going live on Tuesday night until Sunday afternoon. And, um, you know, all of a sudden that that's up and running. So do that, help us out. Uh, and, and we appreciate, you know, any, anyone who shares our stuff on social media just helps us find more coaches, you know, especially here in Canada, we're trying to grow that network, you know, on this side of the border. Um, you know, I've had a couple of coaches reach up like, Oh, I just found your stuff. Like, thanks so much. And, you know, I always tell people I'm super fortunate to be able to do this because I think I learn a little bit, you know, as, as much or more than anybody else. Um, Cause I actually get to, you know, ask the questions. So thanks again for being here with us. We're, we're excited to be here with uh, coach Justin Chaplain, who's currently the office coordinator at Sherbrooke um, coach. Thanks for being here. And if you want to give people kind of a rundown of, you know, how you got to Sherbrooke and, and, and running some of the stuff you're running right now, and then we'll dive into some, some rub concepts for both man and zone, which I'm super excited for great topic. Good, good. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Coach. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Certainly, um, uh, like you said, yeah, I, I believe Twitter is a free clinic. Honestly, uh, the, the the sharing of information that you can get off of Twitter is 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 absolutely insane, and especially with you know Google Drive. I, you know, I've I've had the pleasure of uh, finding playbooks from uh, Mike Leach's 1999 Oklahoma Sooners team. Uh, June Jones is. Uh, run and shoot offense when he was at Hawaii. So I, honestly, uh, yeah, take take advantage of Twitter. Twitter is uh, such a great tool. Uh, I, I got to give props to Coach uh, Sharif Nikala because it was actually really him that put me out put me out on Twitter and and uh, yeah, he helped me out. And uh, speaking of people uh, that have helped me to get where I am, uh, I'll kind of give a, a brief rundown of you know my my career and you know what I've done uh, to get to where I am. And I got to give a lot of thanks, a lot of recognition to uh, the coaches that I've uh, had the pleasure to work with, work for, work with. And uh, yeah, I first started playing football you know, at, at the university level at, at Queens University. I uh, started in 2009, was part of the, the Vanny Cup winning team. I was a backup quarterback behind uh, the great Danny Brannigan. Uh, so I got to learn a lot from him. 
Uh, after that year, I, I was the starting quarterback. Uh, I changed position to play receiver uh, for my last three years. And uh, it was great uh, to be part of a team with a great group of individuals. And uh, honestly, a great head coach, Pat Sheehan. And uh, Pat Sheehan uh, recently just uh, retired. Uh, an amazing mentor. Uh, he has definitely molded uh, me as an individual and uh, absolutely as a coach as well. So, uh, yeah, he helped me out to start my career. Uh, after my fifth and final year at Queens, I signed a contract with the, uh, the Red Blacks of Ottawa. And uh, at that point, I went through and did the, uh, the spring camp. That was the year they came back. Uh, I believe that was in 2013. 2014, they came back that year. And uh, following the spring camp, I had decided that I wanted to go and do teacher's college rather than play professionally. Uh, I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, however, my father, uh, whose name is Jacques Chaplin, who's a, uh, who was a, a coach who coached at uh, different universities within Canada, as well as different uh, CFL teams, uh, he became the head coach at Simon Frizz University. And he had asked me if I uh, was interested in coaching the tailbacks uh, at, at, at that university. At that time, uh, it was a really enticing opportunity because uh, Simon Fraser is a uh, Canadian institution that plays in the NCAA. So they, uh, they play in, in, the, uh, in Division II and uh, got to play against a lot of great talent. So it was uh, a really great experience. Uh, had to kind of work my way up, even though I had a title of uh, uh, running backs coach. I, uh, I was uh, one of those guys that had to show the, the defensive scout team card. Uh, I had to run, uh, I had to do a lot of uh, uh, game scouting for my father. He was the head coach. And I had to draw a lot of diagrams off the of playmaker. Uh, I had to work hard and, uh, and kind of prove myself as, as that, at that position. Uh, and it paid off, certainly, because my father, after that year, he, uh, he went on to be the offense coordinator with the Rough Riders uh, of Saskatchewan. And uh, at that moment, he had uh, asked me if I wanted to be an offensive assistant with the team. And I couldn't pass up that opportunity to coach at the professional, especially with uh, an organization like the Rough Riders. So uh, I got to do that. I got to be uh, the assistant re receivers coach to Jermaine Copeland, and I got to learn a lot from him. Uh, as well as other great coaches like Avon Coburn, Dan Derazio, Bob Dice was a special teams coordinator as well. Uh, it was a great opportunity, but you know, at the same time, it, I, I learned a lot from that that experience. Our, our head coach Corey Chamberlain got fired within the season, and so uh, that was kind of like my first uh, experience being part of a team where the head coach got fired during the season. So we had really had to uh, work hard to try to be as productive as we could be. It wasn't the season that we wanted, uh, but I learned a lot uh, as a coach and as an individual for sure. After that year. Kind of been coaching limbo. I didn't know if I wanted to continue coaching. Uh, my father, he had told me to just kind of play it out, take some time to rest. And then within a month, you'll, uh, you'll kind of re-earn re the taste or the, 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 the craving to go and coach. And so uh, I reached out to Ryan Sheehan, who was my quarterback's coach at Queen's University at that time. He was the offense corner at University of Calgary. And I, honestly, I just wanted to coach. I wanted to be part of a team. I, I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, be part of a family that would uh, try to accomplish one uh, a purpose. And uh, so I, I became the receivers coach for that team. Uh, had a great year. We went all the way to the Vanny Cup, unfortunately lost to a great Laval team. Uh, and after that season, or during that season, I should say, my father was, kind of give a little bit of a context with that. My father was, um, he was the receivers coach with the Alouettes. Uh, and during that season, uh, it was a, a tough season, but he became the uh, interim head coach and following that season, he was hired as the head coach. And so uh, he had hired me to be the receivers coach uh, for the Alouettes. And uh, during that season, obviously, that was another tough season because my father got fired during the season. And uh, I myself uh, didn't think it was wise to stay with the team. I didn't think it was beneficial to myself or uh, the team itself. So uh, I left. And uh, following that season during, I think just before the holidays, uh, Pat Bois, who uh, was the offensive coordinator at Bishop's University, uh, who's working with uh, Sharif Nikola. He had contacted me and uh, we kind of started the process of uh, doing interviews with uh, Sharif Nikola to see if I was a, you know, a good candidate to be the offensive coordinator. And he gave me an opportunity and I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. So I uh, came back to Quebec, uh, coached uh, in my, uh, my city. I was born in Sherbrooke, so I came back to Quebec. Uh, <laughs> More so as an Anglophone, I, I didn't really have a lot of experience speaking French. Uh, and at Bishop's University, I felt uh, comfortable in that situation as well because it is a uh, an Anglophone university. 
so I went through that year. Uh, during that year, uh, I had the pleasure to meet some of the some coaches from University of Sherbrooke, and uh, they hired me on staff at the University of Sherbrooke. And uh, uh, as of now, I'm still at avec le Varieur, uh, the University of Sherbrooke. So it's uh, it's a great experience. I'm loving it, and uh, can I continue working hard in this in this great uh, conference to uh, try to be number one? Yeah, and obviously, you know, for for us here in Ontario, I often one of my favorite things to do at the end of the OUA season is go back and watch as much film from the queue as you can. Obviously, right? There's been a ton of great teams, and I think you know it's a really innovative, um, you know, conference. A lot of guys with CFL ties coaching at, at schools, you know, like yourself, and obviously, you know, the other programs there. And um, you know, it's we we we're, as we've been doing this. Obviously, you know, for me, I know a lot of guys in the OUA, so it's been great to you know, have guys from Can West and, and actually you're our first guy from the queue and active coach in the queue. Um, I'm 99% sure of that. I think I have to go back and double check, make sure, you know, sometimes we've had a few different guys on in one episode, but um, you know, I think anytime, you know, and it's as one, you know, one guy who's gone through kind of some of the stuff you've gone through coaching the OUA and, you know, starting kind of, you know, really soon after your, after your playing career, you know, I, I always tell young coaches like, get out there and start coaching. Like if you want to coach, like, don't be like, Oh, I'm, you know, in my early twenties or, or mid twenties, I'm going to wait till later. And you can do that. You can get, come back to the game whenever, you know, whenever you're ready to do that and at whatever level of commitment you're looking for. But um, you know, I talked to a lot of guys that are transitioning. I think with COVID too, it's big, like transitioning from playing to coaching. There's a lot of guys who maybe their career didn't finish the way that they right. thought that it would. And they still have that itch to, like you said, be part of a team and, you know, try and do something great. And, and I think that, that's something with COVID. I've been so thankful with, with my, you know, work with Cambridge Lions to have that, to have a goal, to have a team, to have, right. you know, other coaches to work with and learn from, to have players to, to you know, to interact with and, and challenge and, and try and get better. So, you know, anyone, you know, who's watching this from, you know, from people who might be just starting in that process to people who haven't even, you know, thought of it yet, but maybe you're, you're feeling that itch for the game. I think there's more opportunities out there, even at the youth sport level. It doesn't mean you're going to walk into a, you know, a great, you know, high paying, high security job or anything like that. But if you want to go and learn football from, from really good coaches, I think the best way, you know, to do that is to go get on somebody's staff. And like you said, like run the scout cards. That was one thing, you know, I took a ton of pride my first couple of years coaching at Laurier, Ron Van Morker, who we, we were talking about here before as well, um, who was a huge, you know, mentor of mine uh, running his scout team. I was like, okay, like this, this would be, this is important, right? Like this is the you know, Laurier defense has been, uh, a huge part of our culture there for a long time. And, you know, coach V takes so much time making sure that the cards are perfect, that, right. you know, the putting his guys in tough situations and, you know, you got your, your 12 freshmen there on the scout team. It's like, all right, guys, we're going to do our best Western impression right. today. You know, and uh, there's no better. I learned more doing the scout team from other teams, like so much of the right. stuff that I run, you know, on my own team now uh, isn't necessarily stuff we ran at Laurier. It's stuff was like Western scout cards or, right. you know, um, you know, max scout cards or whoever we we're doing that week that I, I love what they're doing on offense or defense. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's a great, you know, message for young coaches too, in terms of, you know, talking about this, what we're going to talk about today with concepts, you know, I think as we get into it and, you know, you've got a lot of great stuff here. I always struggle, um, with, in terms of past concepts of, okay, I want this to work against as much as I can, but I also yeah. want it to have a purpose, right? Like we have plays in our playbook that attack certain coverages. And, right. you know, I think the rub route stuff is so universal. Like in everybody's offense, you're going to have right. some, you know, version of that. Um, and it's not something that I've spent a ton of time, you know, personally uh, experienced with, you know, different concepts, especially against zones. So right. I think especially yeah. high school coaches watching this, um, you're always trying to get your best, your best guys the ball. Right. And especially in key downs and situations. So, you know, um, I'm excited for you to jump in here and, and talk yeah. us through how you guys do that a bit at Sherbrooke. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> you said rubs. Uh, I think it was Lincoln Riley who had made a joke about the term rub. And he had mentioned that uh, offensive coaches or offensive coordinators, they call them rubs, but defensive coordinators, they call them picks. So <laughs> we, uh, we don't want to be aggressive when we're trying to rub. You just want to uh, create a conflict and we want to make uh, I always talk about marginal gains or marginal errors uh, and so if a defensive back or defender uh, takes one step uh, in one direction and it, it throws him off his track or his pathway to go defend a route uh, we just won 
we won that marginal gain right there. And now uh, we have freed uh, a receiver to be open. Um, we talk about route families here at University of Sherbrooke. Uh, we have quicks, rubs, floods, verticals, shallows, um, if I'm not mistaken, corners as well. So uh, we place all of our concepts really into uh, our families before uh, we kind of dive into the nitty gritty and kind of talk about all this. Um, so, and one thing that I, I gotta have to say before I start talking about these concepts, um, my father, he did a really good job of um, explaining the difference between routes and patterns. Uh, routes are an individual assignment uh, and how we run a route, uh, we have to work on our craft and our technique to make sure uh, that our individual success uh, will help the collective success of the group. Uh, and so patterns now are, are combinations of routes. And so uh, our players really need to understand first and foremost alignments, uh, you know, their responsibility, their assignment, uh, but also they need to understand defensive techniques as well. And so um, what, you know, this, the, the subject of this clinic here was, you know, simple rub concepts. Uh, I'm going to talk about rules within these routes that are going to help um, teams to allow the receivers to be open. Uh, now, I say they're simple. Uh, now, the one thing is, you know, talking is one thing, putting it into action is another thing. So we have to make sure that uh, our players are getting reps. We have to give them great, great defensive looks come like this scout team uh, defensive cards to make sure that uh, they're getting this certain look. And we have to game plan certain situations, what we're going to see. Uh, you know, we call it the green zone, not the red zone. Uh, what we're going to see in second and five here uh, in our conference, which usually a lot of teams will send a lot of pressure and play man to man. And so we want to see defensive techniques uh, and we, we want to help our receivers the best that we can. So if, if it's okay, uh, coach, I'm going to jump right into it and start talking about uh, these concepts. I got two concepts that I'm going to show you guys today. Um, they are vertical stretches. Uh, the first concept that we're going to look at is basically a variation of smash. Uh, however, we are, the goal of this concept is that we are trying to uh, free or open up access for one of our receivers. Okay. So this is a document that I'm showing you guys right now that we showed to our receivers. We share this document. You'll see in the coaching points right here down below. It's in French. Uh, at the University of Sherbrooke, it is a, a French uh, university. So I, I have to speak in French to, to, uh, to our kids to make sure that they have a good comprehension. Uh, but at the time, at times as well, they, they understand certain English terms. So I have this document right here. What I can do after the, uh, after the presentation, I can share this with you guys. Uh, and I'll try to... Uh, create a Google Drive as well to share some of my clips with you guys as well so that you can have those and, and uh, you know, show it to your players. I always believe that if you show it off of film, guys will have or your players will have a better understanding of it and they can go out and execute it the best that they can. So we're going to talk uh, two concept, uh, two receiver side concept and three receiver side concept. I'm going to start to the left of the screen here with the two receiver side concept. Uh, I'm going to start with the wide outs, kind of work myself in right here. Uh, so the X receiver in this diagram right here, uh, he's going to run uh, basically a corner route. Now, uh, down south, I believe some American coaches call this a shake route. Um, it's like an inside release on the cover defender to run a corner route. Um, the number two receiver, the H that we see right here, uh, he's going to run basically a speed, uh, a quick speed out at six yards. Okay. Uh, now, that's the simplest way that I teach to our guys without giving them detail. Uh, now, the one thing that's really important is that they need to understand contour of the defenders to their side. Okay? So uh, basically, I'm going to talk about three scenarios with this concept right here. Okay, The first scenario. All right. So in Canadian football, if there's uh, American uh, listeners right now or spectators who are watching this, just so you know, Canadian football, our receivers, we can move um, horizontally and vertically uh, before crossing the line of scrimmage. And that includes our wideouts. Uh, so we can really take advantage of that. We can sure, we can find great leverages on on defenses to really, uh, you know, win our routes. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm going to just talk about a contour, a hold contour of the defense. And contour, if you guys don't understand, is basically the, sh the, the defensive structure of the defensive backs and where they're placed. So basically, if the, the halfback right here in this situation, in this diagram is low, we're going to tell the X receiver right here, uh, that he's going to move laterally or horizontally on the line of scrimmage, and he's going to go target the outside shoulder 
of that defender. Now, we are not going to create contact on that guy. We're just going to go and uh, basically attack that to kind of give a presence, an ex uh, I'll say an external or an outside presence on the defender, uh, just to make him conscious of that. Okay? Now, as he passes the defender right now, he needs to understand where the outside defender, his cover defender is. Okay, so if the cornerback right here is playing high, okay, what I have done in the past, and our receivers are pretty smart enough to understand that, uh, they understand with their corner route because we're trying to find this outside space right here. Uh, they know that they're covered, okay? So typically what they do is they'll just continue running straight, okay? They know they're not getting the ball in this situation, <laughs> all right? With that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the inside receiver, the H right here, to help set up the rub. Okay, we're going to tell this um, H receiver right here, we're going to tell him to do a shave release, a shave release for us. Uh, some coaches will talk about stems. Some coaches will talk about radicals. We want him to subtly take an inside stem on the defender just to keep him inside. Okay, And we want to be, uh, I don't want to say patient, but we do not want to be ahead of the X receivers. We want to let the X receiver pass in front of us, and we're going to run off his uh, behind uh, to run and basically find this outside space. I like to talk about spaces with our guys. I firmly believe that uh, if you want to be a productive offensive team, you need to have uh, your personnel in the right spot. Uh, you need to find open spaces on the field and your offense really needs to respect the time of the timing of the play. Okay. So that's the first scenario. Basically the X receiver in this scenario will split okay, the halfback and the corner in that scenario. Okay. That's the first scenario. Second scenario right now. Okay. If the two defenders right here, like we see in the diagram, are playing at a depth greater than seven yards, the two together, we do not tell the X receiver right here to come down the line of scrimmage, okay? We say to him that at the snap of the ball, you're going to take off from your alignment, and you're going to take an inside stem or a shave release, okay? And you're going to split the two defenders, okay? Why do we do that? If we reduce our alignment, we give the halfback now an angle to play over top the vertical stem of the X route, okay, to play the outside out route. And we don't want to do that. We want to create a rub, okay? So the two first scenarios that I had talked about were basically splitting, okay, the two defenders, okay? So that's super important to understand, okay? Now, this final scenario that I'm going to speak about right here, okay, uh, is a scenario where the shape route or the corner route He's actually going to release outside of the corner, the corner back right here. Okay. And this is a rare scenario. It doesn't happen often, but I got some good cut ups of it. Okay. So, first and foremost, now let's say, like our first scenario, the halfback is low. Okay. Or lowish, let's say five yards. Okay. And we got man turn from the two defensive backs right here. The cornerback is a little bit lower as well. So, the X receiver in his head thinks, okay, I need to reduce my split to have a better angle or better leverage on the halfback. But he also notices that the cornerback follows him inside. Okay. At the snap of the ball, if the cornerback and the halfback, the space in between them is really tight. We actually tell the X receiver to go outside the cornerback. Okay. And now basically we're creating tra a traffic jam with the X receiver, the cornerback and the halfback all inside of the H receiver, okay? Another example of this is if the corner is in press, we skate down the line of scrimmage, he skates with you. We're gonna anticipate the skate as well. We're gonna jab inside and release outside to collision with the outside shoulder. And we're actually gonna target the inside defender, okay? Show the referees that you're running towards that defender, okay? And now H right here, because the X receiver is being inhibited, okay? You need to be super patient with your route. And once the X receiver and the corner together, okay, are moving upfield, pass underneath them too, and you're gonna be wide open, okay? We're taking two for one, okay? So those are basically the three scenarios that we teach with our guys. And we work those scenarios to death when we do routes on air with our guys, okay? The three man side right now, super simple right here, okay? We're just going to tell the Y receiver himself, he's going to have a basic cut out. Why do we want a basic cut? We want the distance between the speed cut out and the basic cut out to be uh, well separated. We don't want the inside receiver, the Y receiver right here to be just behind the speed cut out. 
And the little arrow that's coming down right here, that means if there's an outside low defender against zone, so we can imagine here a cover four weak where the Sam linebacker goes up high right here, halfback plays low, okay, the free safety is going to push weak, okay? If this halfback stays low right here, we're going to occupy this space right now, okay? So if we see, okay, basically the, the outside defender with his hips squared to the line of scrimmage, okay, we're going to perform a tee up. That means that we're going to guarantee the out, so we're going to take three steps after the break, and we're going to plant the outside foot, and we're going to turn and show our numbers to the quarterback, Okay? And when we do that, we're going to expect the ball inside because there's an outside low defender. And I hope that's making sense to everyone right now. Yeah. I should have spoken a little bit about our corner routes. At Sherbrooke, we're a little bit different when we teach our corner routes. Yeah. Our corner routes right here, a lot of teams will teach the high angle. Okay. Uh, I believe firmly, and I, I just, I believe firmly in repetitions. And I don't, I didn't have the chance last year or the previous year in 2019 to rep a lot of high angle corner routes and to succeed with that route. You got, you have to look at yourself scout and really look at your corner at your, your individual routes to see what's the production rate. I found that we didn't throw a lot of high corner routes. So what we do teach basically is that if there's a high defender uh, and we use basically the R4 uh, acceleration zone. So we talk about the zone, the collision zone, the, uh, the cushion zone, and then the cap zone right here. If that defender is really high, we actually want to be flat, okay? If we pass the defender, okay, who's covering us, okay, and there's no one in the space, that's the only time that we're going to take uh, that. We're going to go occupy that space, okay? So when we go and occupy that space, when does it arrive? Uh, honestly, this still times is against press man, in my opinion, that you're really going to take that high angle. And yes, like majority of the coaches we talk about the high angle we talk about the front pylon and the back pylon if you're uh ahead of the or before the 25 yard line you're going to go and target the front pylon of the end zone and if you pass the 25 yard line you're going to go and target the back pylon now, i hope that makes sense to everyone right here and i'm going to show i have some diagrams right here down at the bottom i'm going to try to do my best to draw uh with my PDF file right here. I am terribly sorry in advance if it's just atrocious. So basically versus this structure, what we see right here, we want this X receiver right here to skate down the line of scrimmage. He's gonna take an inside stem right here and he's gonna go and get vertical upfield. Okay, with our corner routes, the depth that we give him is 12 to 14. In the past, when I worked with my father, he did a good job of teaching corner routes to the receivers and saying to them, your depth is gonna be greater than the alignment of the cornerback during the play. Okay, just to not allow him to play both the small route and the big route. Okay, so off of that right now, our H receiver right here, he's going to come down the line of scrimmage. He's going to stem slightly inside. Okay, he's going to let the X pass right there, and he's going to work off his uh, behind right here to go occupy the space. Okay, now if the corner jumps down low and the halfback is still low, or they're playing some sort of like quarters coverage, and I find uh, quarters and cover two in Canadian football is very similar. Uh, you can basically go occupy this space uh, because the corner is seeing the low presence or the low flat route, and he's going to go and jump that. All right. The next diagram over right here, uh, with these two defenders basically at the same level, they're in that cushion zone, okay, or seven yards plus, okay, we're going to tell the X receiver, don't skate on the line of scrimmage, okay? Take off from your lever right here and go split the two. Okay, H receiver right here. You're going to do the same thing. Subtle stem inside right here and go out. Okay, if the corner is getting depth right here and the halfback is playing, they're playing like a soft man. Hey, we want the H, or not the H, but the halfback right here. We want to create a traffic jam during the route stem or during the play. Okay, and we want that traffic jam to occur basically around seven to eight yards. Okay, so if that happens right there, we just succeeded. Okay. Uh, next, right now, I kind of drew this the, the last time on the, the previous diagram right here. We're going to see a, a little uh, diagram right here with the corners and press. Okay, we're going to anticipate that he's going to follow us inside. We're going to say that the halfback's playing a little bit softer right here just because uh, the H receiver who's a slot back has that, that vertical threat with his waggle. Okay, and with this X receiver, uh, he needs to put himself square to the line of scrimmage just before the snap. He's going to jab step with the right foot, or it's going to be the left foot on the other side of the, uh, the offensive lineman. And he's going to try to win outside. 
as he wins outside, it's going to collision with the outside shoulder. Uh, I, I would believe that the corner is going to be impressed. And we want to retract basically towards the halfback right here, okay, to try to try to create a collision, okay? And now the H receiver himself is going to have to be patient. Let the X do all the work, okay? And then he's going to go outside, okay? I drew up a four by one. Uh, you can definitely, we do have a four by one concept with this concept, Rain. Um, my father did a really good job. He, he loves drive concepts. My father, drive concepts, if you don't know, are basically uh, progressive reads where there is a, an outbreaking concept to one side of the field and inbreaking concepts that are coming from the other side of the field. You'll typically get shallows, digs, uh, possibly post routes, seams. Uh, and what he had created, and I thought it was genius, uh, basically, you're going to have your shape route from your wide out right here. Who's going to do the same rule, okay? We're going to have our quick speed out right here. The Y receiver is going to have his basic cut out. And what we're going to teach the H, the number four right here, he's going to, if it's a non-HBR team, he's going to go inside right here. He's going to take an inside release on the SAM linebacker. And typically, the SAM linebacker will apex between the, the H and the Y. And basically, he's going to read what's happening, okay? So if the MAC line... The Mac linebacker, Mike linebacker, Mike, Mac, Mike linebacker. I'm not too sure what uh, you guys use. I typically say the Mike linebacker. Okay. If the Mike linebacker is playing uh, a wall technique type right here, we're going to go attack and then we're going to swirl back out. Okay. So now we put this guy really in a uh, horizontal stretch at this given moment. What's he going to do? Is he going to play outside or is he going to stay tight inside the tier? Our halfback, if he's playing low right now, okay, well, we created a rub on him. So basically off the read off the quarterback right now, he's reading outside and off the back, okay? If the Mike linebacker is getting depth and he's dropping in zone, we teach this guy to win inside, okay? And basically he's just going to sit in that zone right there and be available. And uh, usually with drive concepts, what, uh, you know, my father and myself, what we teach, we teach if it's a shallow crosser coming from the other side of the field, uh, when you cross the second linebacker and he's playing zone, we want him to throttle down, show your numbers to the quarterback, throttle down in the zone so we're basically occupying the same space okay and it's just honestly it's the same route we're occupying the same space okay it's just the, a different way to run it any questions right now uh, coach uh, as of later is it uh no nothing i saw there in the chat i can open it back up but i, I love the you know i think it, and this is one thing and, and i was you know, I've I've been fortunate enough that I've coached JV and senior like high school age kids, so right. it's it's cool for me to see the perspective. And I know some people will be a little cautious about, oh, you know, if this, then we're going to do that. Right, right. But I think you know, if you are intentional about it, and if it's important to you, right? Like if you're looking for something that's going to be a staple of your offense, this stuff is doable. You need mm -hmm. to understand it. You need to be able to teach it to your players. And, you know, I know you mentioned the R4 and not, not to do an ad for Dub Maddox, and, <laughs> but like I read those books as well. And that was one of the only football things I've ever read. And I've, and I've gone, I've never heard that before at all right. from anyone. Right? right. And so um, if, if you're not, not a sponsor of the program, but Hey, you know, maybe he'll get a hold of this. But if you have a, a lens in which to teach it, I do think that you can run option routes with young right. athletes, right? Like guys make decisions based on space all the time, right? right? When they have the ball in their hand, they choose right or left based on space. They choose to, you know, to take an angle steeper to the sideline or to cut back right. based on the guy's hips and momentum. Right. So obviously now you need a second person to be with the quarterback to be in line with that. Right. But if you have a way and, and, you know, I think depending on what the concept is, it doesn't even need to be this concept, but right. that's one thing I hear all the time, especially from coaches that are, you know, maybe a little more hesitant with this stuff, but I'm not saying it's easy to teach a grade 10 kid to do this, right. but I am saying it's possible. Right. And I've seen it and done it and not because, you know, I'm, I'm super intelligent or the kids I was coaching were, you know, future road scholars like right. it makes them work but like you said with repetitions you know these kids make decisions based on the leverage of guys hips and their inside or outside leverage all the time when the ball's right. in their hand so they're totally capable of doing it before the ball's right. in their hand. you just need to be able to tell them okay how are we defining who's low if they're even if they're not what's right. the tiebreaker right um, and I think just one, uh, coach Vass, who's a, a, a good, uh, a great Twitter follow. If you're looking to learn anything about defense, right. a guy that I 
I, you know, I, I, I'm refreshing my podcast app, waiting for the next episode. Um, and he's been doing some great stuff on Tuesday nights. He might be going right now. Actually, I have no idea. Right. Um, on it, doing the NFL stuff, but he always talks about, you know, you don't want to say like, do this or this. You want to say you're gonna do this unless. Yeah. And then that way, there's like a decision point, right? It's not all right. oh, I'm doing A or B. It's I'm doing A, but I'm looking for insert specific coaching point like you said right. there like you know if he's taking away that vertical space or however you want to find that whether it's r4 or not or whatever works for you right um th this is something that i think especially especially now where you know throwing the ball is so much more accepted and you know you generally quarterbacks are getting better at every level i know every right. time i do one of these there's co high school coaches who are you know, oh, you know, we, we couldn't run that. And I'm not saying it's true for everybody, right? Like everyone's right. got a different team, right? Everyone's got a different, you know, you might be playing your quarterbacks or middle linebacker. You know what I mean? Like everything's different. But I do think there are some people that are hesitant to try this stuff. Right. Because it's it's it feels like, oh, that's really hard. You're going to read the defense. But like I tell guys all the time, like your kids read the defense all the time. They just they just make the rules up themselves. For right. The you know, so I, I, I that's, that's one important. thing I really liked about Dub Maddox was, you know, he had. I think, you know, I, a lot of coaches, we, we put a lot of stress on kids to understand full field coverages. And I find that so difficult, you know, like you yes. only have two eyes, you know, and so we only see one part of the field. And honestly, I really, what I really appreciate about, about Doug Maddox was, you know, talking about, uh, you know, field zones and talking about the acceleration uh, zones on the field and talking about defenders. And then even going so far, one coaching point that's so simple that changed really our receivers. And I talk to them all the time, pre-snap, man turn, zone turn. And the kids would respond with an answer and they'd say, okay, I get it. You know, you see a zone turn right here. And then you confirm when you cross the line of scrimmage, you're basically uh, getting that zone reaction. And off of the film study that we had, you guys are going to go and, and execute the play. So yeah, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's a that's a maybe I'll manifest that right now. If somebody can spam Dub Maddox on Twitter, that three down development would love to interview him. I imagine he's a busy man talking to uh, a few people with a few more followers than us. But um, you know that if anyone's looking for good books, there's a lot of things you can buy right. in the football coaching world. There's a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, I've never talked to anyone that's like, yeah, I read I read Dub Maddox's books and they were just okay. I've, I've never. Everyone I talked to is like, nope, that's what we do now. Like, right. <laughs> so yeah, it's great stuff. I, I take a lot of stuff from him. I, I, you know, I, the, I love the R4 terminology and I love the progressions, how he structures very much the reads with the quarterbacks. The one thing that I have a hard time with uh, when, if I do teach the R4 system to our kids is I don't want to have the inter or the, um, the overlap of terminology. I find that when he does talk about his, rhythm read rush release it does fall into other uh concepts and so it's just kind of like okay is this the rhythm progression or is this the rhythm read and so that that can get a little bit confusing for kids and so i kind of i use certain little things for him and uh and what i have found is that yeah the way he teaches defenses and spaces on field uh that really opens kids eyes and they really understand that so and especially halo i i, I mentioned that to the, the concept of halo seeing defenses and seeing that there's open spaces that are on the field it's just now our job to go and find them uh i showed that to the kids and they uh <laughs> they went crazy when they saw that can yeah I get no, this a film? yeah man yeah i know it's, it's good stuff you can pull the film up there I'll, I'll make sure you know that it's it's rolling um yeah great it's, it's there that's awesome yeah, yeah i think i your point too just about coverages and this is something that again i'm an offensive lineman so I, my, my dad is a defensive coordinator so i i grew up playing defense loving defense i was just too I was not athletic enough to play linebacker or, or even play defensive line. Right. So, you know, I found my home playing offensive line, which I love, but I always, you know, I, when I was learning playbooks and learning things and you go, Oh, if it's hold coverage, do this. If it's cut coverage, do that. And then like, well, what if it's hold over here and cut over there? Right. Like, how do you want me to pro and like, does it matter then? Like, am I going right. to not call this hold coverage, especially when you have young athletes, like there's so many football words, like right. I'll sometimes read tweets and I'll be like, I, just that's the first time i've ever heard it called that yeah yeah right and sometimes i'm like you know i find myself like we're trying to try and teach all these things to the kids and then oh you, it, that was you know man match not zone match 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, your kids don't need to know that. They need to know, like, is the guy off or down? Is the guy, (laughs) are his hips open or are they closed? Right. So I think if you can talk about, like you said, like contours and the alignment of defensive players, you know, your guy, your kids have so much more confidence because they don't need to be sure. Like if you're playing the boundary wide out, like the alignment of the field corner, well, there's no useless information. The alignment of the field corner is probably not affecting (laughs) You know, the the relationships, if, if you're looking at, you know, the, the DBs on your side, the linebacker right. that's coming up to wall you off, like whatever route you're running, like that's going to be the information you use to make a decision. And, right. and the same thing with the quarterback, right? Like if you're going through a progression, at least for me, and I've never had to go through a progression, so someone right. tell me it's wrong. But if I'm playing quarterback and I'm deciding if I'm going to throw the ball to A, B, or C, there's stuff I want to know pre-snap for sure. Right. And there's stuff that I need to confirm post up Because right. that's the other thing that happened is, Coach, it was hold, so I threw the field stop. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, they showed hold and then the field corner just jumped it. Like, yes, right. the half was low, but the field corner just jumped it, picks it. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's that's such a good point. And when you're right. talking about these concepts, like I think that that's kind of an underrated aspect of teaching these concepts is it's, right. it's the ability to communicate to your quarterback what you're looking at and then what your receivers are looking at. Right. And if you can find – whatever that interface is between the two, uh, however you communicate it, verbalize it, where you start, like, you know, as long as everyone's on the same page, I think it, right. it, it can open up what your kids can do. Kids can always do more. I'm an elementary school teacher. Kids can do more than you think yeah. they can. And they can also. Got to empower them. Sometimes, right. Yes, but, absolutely. Sure. All right. Let's get into films here. And I'm going to speak about certain, the <laughs> certain scenarios that are going to come up, come about what I've learned when I show my, my, my film on zoom, uh, I have to play it in slow mo just to kind of get a good look right here. I don't want it to a lag. So what we're going to see right here, we see we're going to look at the field side. We're going to look at the concept, the two receiver side right here. Uh, we're going to see right now that the halfback is playing low. I find that the wideout is a little bit too wide. I like for him to come down the line of scrimmage just a little bit more. We're going to see the slot back right here. He's going to do a good job. I would have liked him just to turn the hips, but I see that that the left hip. Uh, opens up just a little bit so that shows me that he's really setting up the db well right here and basically right now he does a good job timing is perfect uh this is a concept that we did uh, a lot off of our sprint out uh and our sprint out is a little bit different than uh typical teams how they do it i i I prefer doing the line slide or, or having the movement of the offensive lineman in the opposite direction of where the quarterback goes because i don't like bringing people into the party uh so uh, we did a good job off of that right there. I find he does a good job right there. Uh, he finds the good decision right here. I would like for this receiver to start being a little bit more flatter because this guy is occupying the high space, okay, just to give us an option. And he's start, starting to do that. But let's just get a little bit flatter and get into the end zone. So we, we, we throw the ball outside uh, for a little quick game. The one little issue right here is just the width of the receiver. If he was a little bit tighter, I think it would have created a little bit more conflict on this guy. Uh, the ball, if the ball is just a little bit more to the outside, uh, and we're talking about marginal errors right here, but just those little details will allow us to go score off of that. So we're going to watch all of this. Please, I ask you off of this clip to not watch the backfield. We're going to fumble the mesh right here. Uh, <laughs> however, I did. There's going to be a lot of good examples. There's going to be a lot of bad examples. So uh, we don't pass the concept because we, we did a zone read off of this. That was another con- a concept that we used off of the zone read. We're going to look at these two receivers, okay? Uh, and so basically what we're going to see right now is uh, the defenders are basically around, uh, I'd say, seven yards pretty much. Uh, our wideout starts coming down a little bit too soon, in my opinion. Uh, however, he's going to go and split the two. Now, the one thing that I really like from him right now, he's getting vertical and he's taking his inside stem. Remember what I taught you. If the space between the two defenders is starting to get a little bit tighter, go ahead and take an outside release right here. Be unselfish. Help your teammate. Okay. What are you going to do to help the collective success of our team? And as you see right now, the ball is on the ground right here. Uh, however, if the quarterback uh, held on to the ball and decided to keep the ball off his own read, you can just see the space that we have right here and the possible opportunity to throw our out route. Hey boy, we're not going to look at the tight angle. Another concept, we're going to look basically right here to the, again, to the two receiver side. Uh, I believe we're going to do a zone read action off of this. Uh, again, the quarterback is going to give the ball right here. So we're not really targeting the concept, but as you see right here, we see a, a low halfback right here. This guy is too vertical. He's got to go inside more. Okay. 
Uh, however, we do have a little space outside right here. Quarterback did keep it. He would have to press, uh, not the edge, but the, the perimeter to really get a read off that guy. But what we are seeing right now is basically uh, our low route right here is starting to become open. This, I had this clip in because in previous seasons, when we taught this concept, uh, we gave another option to the corner route. Okay? And what that option was is instead of seeing the high defender right here and continue, continue vertically, just do a little hook and hook around this guy. Yeah, because what you can have right here, if the quarterback keeps the ball, yeah, if the halfback right here, uh, instead of having a vertical stretch, the hook option from the wide out will create a horizontal stretch off of that. And so basically now this guy is really in a predicament. I see a lot of space that's here that's available for us. Uh, we could have had that option into the game. That's for sure. Again, like you said, we got to limit some of the options for our guys as well. But uh, it's something that we've done in the past. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, watching, going through all these, not all these clips, but a lot of these clips, um, you know, we had two comments in the chat about how, uh, you know, this out of, you know, FIB or formation of the boundary, ace week, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, creates a lot of space to the field. And then, you know, that that was the next clip there. And then even here off, somebody brought up using it off of RPO, if, if you guys used it off of RPO as well. Yeah. We talk about, you know, when we when we game plan as well, we look at teams and we want to say, hey, is the Sam linebacker or the rover linebacker? I like to call him the rover linebacker because he moves around a lot. Is he adjusting weak side? If not, you can see right here into the boundary. We have a simple bubble screen out there. And so basically, uh, we could have thrown it. Basically, what we see off the defensive scheme, we're going to see the Will linebacker number 19. who's basically this team, uh, the Cowboys, they played earlier on in the season, more so an odd front structure. And basically, their Sam linebacker, number five, he stayed always to the field, and number 19 stayed to the boundary. Two players that had the same body type, so they basically were two Sam linebackers, but they never adjusted. And so basically, what we're seeing off of this right now, if the quarterback had kept his eye or, you know, perifed, basically, this guy who's blitzing, he could have abandoned the mesh right here, and he could have thrown the now screen at me, dude. Yeah, that's one of my – that's, you know, I haven't – with COVID, you know, the last two years – um, you know, obviously we haven't had any, any summer football games. Um, and, and I was helping Laurie out a little bit, but on defense actually this, uh, this fall with some game plan stuff, but you know, you look at a lot of the RPO stuff, like we talked about kind of before down in the States, that simple, you know, bubble screen to the one side to, to make sure that, Hey, the, the guys that are supposed to be in the run fit are in the run fit. Right. And then you, you know, you target the other, the other side of the RPO, that if if I was coaching and I you know I coach summer football which is different than high school obviously you have right. guys that you know are are traditionally have played a lot more football or or are the higher level athletes in your right. region but even if I was if I was coaching if I was coaching at, at any high school and we were trying to run a spread offense you know that would be something I would do because that bubble screen you, I, people talk so much about the RPO and reading the linebacker. Right. And, you know, I find, especially with some of these formations, like the way you've got it up here at a 23. Right. If you attack the field at a 20, like I know as a defensive coordinator, I don't want to give you two on two to the field. Right. Like if you, if you give, you know, most Canadian offensive coordinators two on two to the field, like they're going to work you. They're going to put one of their better receivers over there. It's going to be tough. Right. So being able to keep defenses accountable with like that backside ball screen, I know not the topic of our thing tonight, but, um, you know, that's one, one thing that I love. Uh, no, the absolutely. We want to, you know, we want to find the the uh, the numerical advantage, and then we want to work the defensive rules against them. So, what I hear a lot from defensive coordinators, I hear flow to flow away. I hear high hats, low hats. So, you know, we want to basically, uh, you know, ambush defenses with their within their rules. You know, I want to give low hats, and that's the great thing about RPOs. You give low hats when you're running a second level RPO. And so that's why they're so aggressive into the run fits. And that's what can create open spaces on the field. This example right here, this is a prime example of a 23. What we see right here against Laval is that they're going to have their Sam linebacker uh, to the field. Now what we're going to see, first and foremost, we're going to throw the bubble screen, but I really want everyone to kind of concentrate right here on these two receivers. What's going to happen right now is I like uh, our receiver, uh, Kev Marin. I like him just to be a little bit wider to start off. Um, but what we're going to see with his movement down the line of scrimmage uh, Laval's defense from time to time they'll play a lot of match coverages and they'll give the rule meg man everywhere he goes so there's certain uh, defenders who will play meg against the receivers now this guy is coming into a press right here what's our rule when it's against press in a corner we want to take an outside release on that guy 
And we want to collision his outside shoulder. The one thing that I don't like about Kev, he allows the defender to get him off his track. We want to force this defender towards the high defender right here to kind of free up okay, the low receiver. Okay? So if the quarterback did play his zone read as opposed to throwing the now screen into the boundary, okay, we would have a lot of space out here, out to the, to the field. <clears throat> Again, the same defensive structure. I believe we have the same play as well. We're going to throw the bubble screen as well because we, we have an advan a numerical advantage uh, to the three receiver side. What we're going to see again is the, the low corner is going to come down into press. Our receiver is going to do a good job. He's going to fight back inside to really create uh, traffic right here for one of these two defenders. You don't want to allow these guys to come down on the out route. We're going to see a big run play off of our tailback right here. This is uh, uh, one of our key plays of the season. However, uh, what we're going to see, we have this now screen into the boundary. We see three defenders into the boundary. We're not playing the, the bubble screen anymore. We're playing zone read. Okay? And what we're going to see right here is basically the wideout came down the line of scrimmage. He didn't have to come down that much. Okay? He could have just left from his position to go basically split these two. He does that. I don't know why. As he gets vertical right now, he gets vertical. We get the outside receiver or the inside receiver, the slot back. He goes and runs his out route right now. And what we're going to see, that, which is really crazy, is these two defenders are going to fall off to find the out route, and no one's going to play the corner route. Okay. The, the one reason why we gave the ball is I have to show this because uh, our right tackle, who's the captain of our team, uh, we have inside zone to the left right here. You're going to see a great sift technique. So his responsibility is the second level dogger, who's number eight. As he comes down the line of scrimmage, you're going to see the sift technique. Turn out, give the ball. Now the tail, tailback is one on one on that free safety. Here's not a good example. So we see press right here with this wide out. Again, I like for him to start a little bit wider. What he does right here is he takes an inside release, and we're going to see what happens when you take an inside release. He takes an inside release. His angle is cut off now. He has not. He does not have a good angle on the outside shoulder of this of the high halfback. And what we're going to see right here as well is. The slot back, because uh, his teammate is getting pushed inside, he's going to go outside uh, really fast, and it allows this guy to recover down on this route. Two by three off of this. What we're going to see right here is uh, this team, they played a funny coverage with a free safety. He really played one side of the field. It's kind of like a quarters coverage in a sense. Um, so what we're going to have basically off of that is our wideout. I think he's, he believes that this guy is low enough where he's going to move himself down on the line of scrimmage. He's going to go split these two low defenders, which does a good job. Our, our slot bag does a good job of really selling inside. We're going to see the low corner right here. He's going to play the out route. The high defender right now is the free safety. And we talk about this corner route right here. We say, who is the high defender that's going to space? He's going to cap the space, the high space. It doesn't necessarily have to be the corner. It doesn't necessarily have to be the halfback. We want to give general terms. And so this is the high defender. And what we see from our slot back right here, he's going to start to get flat right now. He's going to get targeted. Unfortunately, he just needs to finish the play right here just to make the catch. We're going to see a couple of variations right now, okay? So now we're going to watch some of the, the beauty of Canadian football and what we can do with movement. So uh, my father is really known for some funky motions. Uh, and I, I've kind of been influenced by him. And at times I try to find... Uh, certain leverages with certain movements. There always has to be a good reason why we do a motion. I'm just not going to do a funky motion just because it looks appealing. I, I have to make sure that there's a reason towards it. We're going to see this is a drop back pass. Don't get so it's not zone read or sprint out. Okay? And what we're going to see is a, a drive concept. So our rain concept is going to come from this uh, receiver side. They're going to be in a shadow movement right here. This is really popular in the States, but they're more so static. We see offenses like Tennessee, Western Kentucky, that line up fast in these twin sets. Uh, us, the, the benefit with us is we can do this in motion. So we get these two guys coming inside uh, with the motion. They're going to square back up just before the snap. And what we're going to see right here, I would have liked our, our wide out right here just to come inside to kind of pick this guy. But we're going to see really good receiver technique from our slot back, the guy who's on the line of scrimmage. He's going to stutter him. He's going to get outside. He's going to restack the defender, plant his foot, and create separation that way. But what you see right here, this team played a lot of um, 
when it was second down, they played a lot of man to man. And so with the bunch right here, what we did, uh, we tried to create a couple of, a little bit of confusion right here. We're going to have a dig from this guy. Uh, we're going to have our shallow crosser from the outside receiver. And then we're going to have another dig from the outside receiver. So what happens right now, number 13 is trying to play man lock on the shallow crosser, but he has to go through all this traffic to try to find this guy. My big bunch guy myself, I love it. Uh, the reduced sets, I, I love reduced sets. I find that a lot of defensive corners think that you're going to run outbreaking concepts out of reduced sets. Uh, however, you can run a lot of inbreaking concepts with reduced reduce sets. Yeah, that's, that's been one one thing this offseason I've really tried to study more of. Um, and, you know, the old lineman in me is like, hey, like if we're going to run inside zone, like can we get everybody else out of the way? We'd like to run the ball. But <laughs> – when, as a defensive coordinator, and maybe I shouldn't put this out in the world, I don't want to see it. So yeah. I'm, ho I'm hoping, you know, um, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, there's not too many OSFL offensive coordinators on here. But um, it's so tough. And like you said, obviously you have the, the space to run outbreaking routes. But one of the things that, that I've, I've seen a lot of CFL teams do a great job of, and um, specifically I was watching Hamilton and, and Tommy Condell, is they'll change the strength of the formation like by moving guys out of the bunch and then dragging right. receivers across. So right. you might have a base three by two set, but you know, really, really late motion. One of those guys from the bunch is going to motion across and, and right. run something into the other flat. Right. And then you get the deep over or those deep digs. And all of a sudden, you know, you started with three guys on one side of the field and in a second and a half after the snap, two of those guys have now gotten into the boundary or, right. or vice versa um and so yeah it's definitely something actually um and i know he's on here too Chaz douglas who I, I helped out a little bit in high school this year uh with centennial we ran a ton of stuff on a tight bunch and it's just such a tough such a tough cover i think because guys aren't used to it right you don't do one-on-ones from that right that position and i saw i think it was popular last year on twitter guys you know, especially the year maybe two years ago now that joe burrow came out and lsu right. was doing fun yeah of the tight bunch stuff and I think it was saving. It was like tight bunch and a tight stack. So it's right. literally like three by two, but everyone's close to the line. Right. And uh, I think Saban brought like double corner blitz. And somebody <laughs> somebody was like, man, if you can get Nick Saban to bring both corners, like you've pissed that guy off. Like that's got to be right. – <laughs> So it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a challenge, man. I love it. It's something I, I'm interested in learning more about myself. Honestly, I'd love to do another clinic on it because we did a lot of stuff at a bunch this year. Uh, and I think, you know, you talked about LSU and that was really funny. You talked about LSU. And one thing that inspired me from LSU was they ran duo out of it. We yes. abused it. At yeah. <laughs> we abused it this season. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm a big fan of bunch. Yeah, awesome stuff. So this is another example right here. So basically what we're going to see uh, with these two uh, defenders, our wide receiver does a good job of motioning. He needs to stay outside. He's going to go and attack the outside shoulder, but he needs to keep that outside shoulder, uh, the, the outside target, and he needs to pass outside. He cannot get caught up in this. We still, we, he is our guy that's rubbing, but we still want him to be an option. We don't want him just going out and rubbing. I find that I see a lot of concepts nowadays where there's a, just a receiver whose sole job is to basically go and try to inhibit a defender to play man-to-man -man with somebody and that's his sole job i want him to be an option for us so we get the ball outside here, here in the quick flat right there and we get a nice little game uh what's gonna happen here yeah so what's gonna happen here uh what we're gonna see uh this guy's gonna come down the line of scrimmage again we had that that habit and we gotta get out of that habit that's on me i gotta make sure that these guys understand the depths of these guys and they cannot continue to come down the line of scrimmage I thought this guy could have really just kind of uh, took off from his uh, original alignment. But what you're going to see right here is these guys are basically going to perform like a stack relationship. Uh, it wasn't, uh, we weren't meant to do that, but they, they stack basically off of this. What I do like is from this guy, he had the rule in head that if the space between these two guys right here is really tight, go outside the outside defender. And so what you see right here basically is a wide open receiver out here to the outside of the field. And again, we're going to throw the now screen because we do have an a uh, numerical advantage. We just got to do a better job of blocking on the perimeter. Now we're going to see the concept out of three receivers. And so we're going to have a nice little motion. This was in 2019. So we're going to see a nice little motion. Uh, and basically, we're going to see the three receiver side. Uh, our wide out right here, it's his job to go attack the outside shoulder. Again, we're going to see a really good example of 
during the play, if you find that the space between these two defenders is really tight, please go outside. Be unselfish. Okay, but what you're going to see is the depth of this defender right here with number 29, who's right here. The defender also creates a rub. And so our quarterback sees that. And basically what he's going to do is he's going to throw to the uh, quick out. And so basically we do have our basic cut right here. I like for this basic cut just to be a little bit more patient. He's a little bit too fast coming out of his break. But what he sees basically off of that, there's no outside low defender. So he's got to keep going. We did this off of seven man protection. Really good play off of seven man protection. What I see a lot of teams do uh, nowadays is they'll run just a base, a simple three man smash concept with seven man full line slide protection. What we did start to do this year and what we taught to our guys, I didn't have it on the diagram. Is our slot back, we did teach them the tee up technique, the, the stop, put your foot in the ground, show your numbers when there's an outside low defender. So what we're going to see right here is uh, this team, this defensive team right here, they're going to play uh, a similar cut contour. You see, <laughs> I'm mixing my French words with my English words right now, excuse me. So basically what we see is this low cornerback and our one of our veterans right here is going to do a good job of noticing that. He sees the hips, he sees the shoulders. So basically, he's going to stop in that open space. We got zone read, and we're going to go and uh, catch the ball right there. And that's a nice little pitch and catch for uh, uh, a nice little game. I would have liked for this receiver right here, without losing his leverage right here, just to be a little bit more flatter towards the sideline. He's a little bit too high. One thing uh, just came to my mind there, Coach, and, and I'm sure that this you know can change based on field side or boundary side, but – if you're running this concept in the boundary, where do you want uh, that two receiver in the boundary, the slot back, like to start split wise? Right. Like, where, what's kind of your alignment for those two receivers? Right. It's a good question. So ideally, when we run corner routes within our team, we try to say if you're running the corner route into the boundary, we want you to be uh, on or inside the numbers. And if we're running it to the field, we want him ideally to be uh, on or inside the hash. Now, I don't want to create tendencies. That's the one thing that I don't want to do. Uh, so de depending on the team, we'll kind of we'll, we'll change that from time to time. Now with the slot back, uh, we keep it pretty simple. Honestly, we try to say just inside the numbers and we say, uh, you know, split the difference between the wide out and the tackle and try to maintain that leverage. You want to allow basically your teammate to, uh, to, 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 to do all the work. And so basically, basically off of this right now, Kev, you know, he does not need to inch step inside. He can just take off from his alignment. He can go split these two guys. He can take an inside stem and his inside stem. What he needs to do right now is he needs to understand that if he inside stems, he cannot go all the way inside this defender. We need to win our leverage. We need to have options. And what you're going to see from this, uh, I did a Yeah. Like you had mentioned, I did a clinic. Uh, we talked about this before the, uh, the, the presentation. I did a clinic with uh, coach uh, Charbonneau and uh, coach Dumoulin. Um, I think in, during the first confinement, and I talked about a concept that we call money. Money is very similar to rain. Uh, the one difference is our corner route. Instead of really reading this guy, we tell him to come down the line of scrimmage no matter what. And basically what we tell him to do is to run a corner route. What you're going to see from this guy right here, what he's going to do, he's actually going to trail the outside hip of the corner route. Okay. And he's going to be patient. He's going to read the low inside defender. Okay. So if there's a low inside defender, you're going to run away from him. You're going to run an out route. If there's no low inside defender, you're going to just do a hitch route inside. And so what we see right here is uh, in 2019, we had a savvy vet right here. He does a good job right here. He breaks outside. And I, I mentioned it earlier with the, the rain concept. In this game right here, we, we found that this team right here played a lot of cover three hold, especially when they had uh, fire zone blitzes. And so what we said is, hey, if you see a low defender and a high defender right here, Go ahead and curl around him. And so we see that right now with this receiver. Now, what we want to do right now is we don't want to drift inside. There's defenders inside. We want to stay away from them. The ball's a little sails on us a little bit too high. All right. So I'm back to the start right here. I'm going to go to my other concept right here, which is going to be very similar but different. And I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you'll understand why. Our next concept right here, we call it Zephyr, okay? Uh, Zephyr, again, is a vertical stretch on the defense. Uh, and what we saw from the previous concept, rain, uh, that concept was outbreaking. This concept is going to be in-breaking, okay? Uh, 
what we want to do is we want to rub for the wide out. Okay, we want to rub for the wide out receiver right here. Our half, our, our slot backs, not our half backs, our slot backs right here. Don't so the H and the R, these guys are doing all the work. However, there's still going to be an option for us if need be. Okay. So basically the coaching points that we give our guys right here, we tell our wideouts right here, you're going to do a three-step slant. And what we're going to say to the wideouts, you're going to stem slightly outside. We call it a spray release. Spray slightly outside. Okay. We want to set up the corner this time, not the halfback, not the inside defender. Okay. The slot back, so the H and the R in these two diagrams, they're going to go and target the inside shoulder of the cornerbacks, okay? And again, with this guy, like the shape corner that we see, we're going to go and split the two defenders. And again, I'm going to talk about three scenarios, okay? So basically, if we see that the cornerback here is playing low, okay, we want to reduce the angle right here to try, okay, and rub the inside shoulder of that defender. If he's playing press right here instead of doing a three-step slant with our x receiver we want them taking one step and getting inside fast to occupy this space okay if the halfback is playing low and i'll talk about two scenarios if that's the case uh, if the halfback is playing low and the corner is playing high we can do do we can do one of two things and it depends on game plan okay if the halfback is low what we can do okay we can pass outside of him Okay, and we can bend back inside to be available in the seam area. Okay. Another thing that we can do is we can attack the halfback right here. And what we can do is we can pass inside, collision the inside shoulder, okay, and bring that defender to the outside defender to create okay, a rub. All right. And I, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of some co controversial film at the end of my Zephyr playlist. Okay. But that, that, that scenario is very similar to uh, the scenario in the rain concept when the corner was playing press, okay? And I like the second scenario that I mentioned with the rain, and I should have mentioned that before talking about the low halfback. If these two defenders are basically playing seven yards away from the line of scrimmage, okay, we want this guy, the slot back right here, who's running this uh, slot fade or seam, okay, we want him to split the two, okay? And what we say with this, uh, these, sl these slot backs right here with their routes, uh, if the space is open right here, you're going to go and do a slot fade. If the space is capped, you bend inside okay, to basically run your scene. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask everyone a question or, yeah, I'm going to ask everyone a question right here. Would you all agree with me that Zephyr is basically rain, but in breaking? I basically took the same concept that I just coached you guys and I just flipped it the other way. Okay. The sole difference now is now we're attacking and we're targeting other people. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great point. I think one thing that, you know, when you're, when you're trying to build this stuff and, and it's been fun over the last two years, you know, for me and for I'm sure lots of coaches so much to learn. Like, it's crazy to think that like early on in COVID, I was like watching the Joe Burrow stuff and it was like semi new. Right. And now like he's in the Super Bowl this weekend, right. but um, <laughs> that's one thing that whenever I'm like, okay, this is a new concept do I want to use it or not? Right. Be, how much, you know, so if you basically, you're, if you teach, you know, rain, you're, you're getting this concept, right. like 70, 80%, you've got to teach the differences. Right. But you're, if, if your kids can understand the first one, they can translate a huge amount of that to, to the next one. And, and that right. I think like some of the, the stuff, and, and I've been trying to watch more CFL, film like the 2021 cfl film i'm working right. my way through a few different teams and that's one of the, i think that's the secret sauce like when you look at these like really good offenses it's like yes they run lots of stuff yes they're diverse and they run a ton of different things and they, right. they threaten teams but there's so much carryover like the stuff that they do in every game the stuff that they do consistently when they need to move the sticks like or or to head of the sticks like that's where I think, you know, as a young coach who's excited about scheme, right? Right. I've got to always rein myself back and say, okay, if, if play A and play B to me are just as good, but I get three other plays with play A that are pretty darn close, whereas play B is kind of a standalone, one situation, you know, concept. Like, I'm going to go with the one that gives you the versatility every time. Right. And, and I think that that's like a great carryover for this. Yeah. And so, yeah, Lincoln Riley, he had talked about his mesh concept and he said, you know, if you're, 
in a situation where, you know, you need a play that you know that's going to work. Honestly, myself, these two plays right here, uh, and they fall basically within the quick game protections that we use with these plays. Uh, and honestly, quick game protections for ourselves with our quarterback, we tell them basically you're going to punch one, don't find the laces, and basically read and throw the ball off of that. So it, the ball is going to come out quickly. And honestly, I believe that the most successful teams, their quarterback, uh, if he can get the ball quickly out of his hands, everybody on the offensive side of the ball looks great. The offensive line, they protect well the quarterback. The receivers did a good job with their speed cuts, getting out of their breaks, and making sure that they're available to the quarterback. The three receiver side right here, uh, when we teach this concept, we teach uh, this wide receiver right here to basically run a post. And how we teach this, uh, we say that he needs to slide inside the SAM. Okay. And once he gets inside right here, he has to have eyes on the free safety. If the free safety crosses his vertical stem, he's going to stay skinny into the middle of the field. Okay. So you'll see a lot of that against two high defenses. Uh, and there's certain coverages like palms coverage or quarters coverage where that can be really available. Uh, and what we do teach as well, if, if we want to have a flat angle right here, if the free safety stays with inside of the vertical stem of the route, we want to stay flat right here. Okay. Uh, we're not going to see a lot of examples of us throwing this concept right here, the, uh, this post route. I call it a Puma route, uh, but uh, there may be a couple, but, I, you know, I, we never really target any of them uh, this past year. So we'll talk about some certain scenarios or situations that I had mentioned. So basically what we're going to see right here, let me change my color right here just to make sure that it differentiates between green and red. So our, our H right here, he's going to recognize that there's a low corner. I'm going to have good film on that. And we're going to go attack uh, the inside shoulder right here. Uh, because the space is compressed between the wide out and the corner, he's going to take one step and he's going to get inside immediately. Uh, and basically, we're going to go rub inside and push vertical. Again, uh, we're going to tell the H after passing this guy that you're going to read the defense. If the halfback stays low and there's no one that's covering the space, just stay vertical into the space right here. And now you got a slot play. Okay? If the halfback gets vertical right here and tries to cap this, that's when we can start to bend inside a little bit more but we're not going to see really an example of that. What we're going to see right here is more so a double press. It's going to be very similar. Okay, we're going to attack the inside shoulder of the cornerback. Our X right here is going to take possibly a stutter step. Uh, I like to call it a stretch release where he's going to stay square and stretch the defender towards the outside and basically move him outside as well. And against double press in this scenario right here with the high free safety, we really want to occupy outside the numbers right here to get into our slot fade. Our X receiver is going to come off uh, the behind of the uh, H receiver right here just to get into the space. Now, I'm going to talk about this scenario right here. Again, when there's a low halfback right here, we kind of treat it like a low corner when it's rain. Uh, again, there's two scenarios, two schools of thought that we can do off of that. Uh, basically, we can tell this guy right here to take an outside release, split the two, and when he sees the high defender right here, we want to bend back inside right here to occupy the seam space. Okay? Or what we can do, is we can say, hey, take an inside release, collision the inside shoulder, and bring your defender towards the corner, uh, and our X is going to be patient off of his route. Again, stem subtly outside. Again, a spray release outside. Okay, and we're going to come underneath uh, that route right here to be available. I don't have the concept out of four. What I've done in the past, however, is I, I've, I've given the H receiver right here, the number four. I gave him a spot route in the middle. And what I did is I gave Zephyr to three and two. I count outside in, so that's one, two, three, four. And so basically, we give this guy basically the same read. The R receiver is going to be the slant that's going to come underneath, and we give this guy a hitch route right here. It's more so a horizontal read in essence. Uh, however, uh, it, it can create some conflict, and we had a receiver that was open uh, in one of our games when we called that concept against him. One question we got there, Coach, is uh, just talking about the why, if they get collisioned, which release they're going to take. If the uh, the why, just so I understand that I clarify that correctly. The... Yeah, sorry, here. Uh, let me take a look in the chat again. I was bouncing back and forth between social media. Okay. Okay, sorry. Can you ask about the angle uh, of entry of the X and the Z on Zephyr as every uh, receiver runs it a little bit differently? Like, yeah. just that slant route. Yeah, so basically, you know, again, a little bit like rain with that quick, that speed cut out. We want to set up the cover defender, so the cornerback. So we want to have a subtle outside stem just to kind of respect the outside uh, and kind of help our, our teammate really uh, get him outside. And we want, to, we want to plant step and come back inside. Against press, 
Uh, like I said, I don't have, I have a little bit of an example. Uh, we have a, I call it a, I think I call it a stretch release, a starter stretch. And basically what we want to do is we want to attack the pressing defender and we want to stay uh, square and we want to stretch laterally. It's like a side shuffle a little bit with fast feet and then come back underneath the route. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, no, that's awesome. We uh, just had uh, just had Coach Butler actually jump in. He originally had said he's going to catch it tomorrow because yeah. I don't even know what time it is. It's bedtime, right. Coach Butler. What's yeah, going on here? There, but that that's dedication. <laughs> Great. So we're going to see. Basically, we're going to start off the bang right here. This is going to be one of our touchdowns. Uh, we have a, to the three receiver side. We have a tight end right here. He's going to run that Puma route. These two receivers right here, they're going to run uh, the Zephyr component. And so what we're going to see uh, is really a really good example right here. We're going to see our slot back right here. He's going to do a good job of targeting the inside shoulder of the corner who's playing to the field side. And what we're going to see right here, he's, he's going to go attack it. He's going to go split the two. What you see right here, here's the key for the quarterback. If we see basically the numbers or the hips turn away from the slant route right there, we can take that slant immediately. And so he does a good job, our slot back right here, of targeting. And this is so subtle, the rub right here. There's the, the marginal gain right there. And so basically we slant underneath it and we get a touchdown right off of that. Let's see a better example right here in one of our practices. Uh, we did it into the middle of the field. I would have liked these two receivers right here just to be a little bit wider. I feel like they're really, they're a little bit too condensed. Uh, but we're, what we're going to see right here basically is you see the stagger release from the two. I would have liked this receiver just to be a little bit more ahead. However, we see the action right here. We're going to go split, okay? And what we're going to see, again, is the subtle rub, okay? This defender right here, the cushion that he gives off right there, he gives off too much cushion, and he allows us to get inside. Now, when I teach slant routes, and this is really hard to teach young kids, we want to teach flat angles. We do not want to stay high. <laughs> and so that's we always talk about being aggressive to the ball, okay? So – we can see right here, our, our receiver, he's starting to have a high angle right here. I would like him to go take one step to the ball, be friendly to the quarterback. So see right here with our, our Puma route, he's a good example. What we see right here basically is he's gonna go attack that guy. And now what he sees, this guy's gonna push past his vertical stem and basically we can go occupy this angle. I love the scheme with seven man protection. And at, in this area of the field, the green zone, which I call it, uh, sometimes there's no free safety into the middle. And typically with the tight end alignment, uh, the free safety who may be the cover defender, the sound linebacker, because that tight end is in a reduced alignment, sometimes he'll play outside and he'll give us the inside leverage. Yeah, I love your point about the slant route. That That's something that, um, you know, I, I picked up from Coach Falls just in terms of how he prefers to run, you know, that stuff. Uh, when he was a coordinator office, I was still a player. It was a big thing I noticed that was different from how we kind of run them previously. And, you know, I think everyone, like you see in like Madden or drawings, it like almost looks like a 45 degree angle. It's like, no, man, that's, you got to cut that thing down. Yeah. I mean, we start getting high. We start, we're starting to meet free safeties in the middle of the field and we possibly can get some, uh, uh, and I can't, I don't even have the, the, the English word in my head right now, but we call them in French, they come also, uh, concussions. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. The, so, the, the thing I I've found too with it is it, it, it forces the receiver, you know, to kind of keep running, right? Like if you kind of drift on that angle, you can kind of get in between like levels of the right. coverage, We're like really like we want you to run away from that guy. Right. You know, obviously if, if you're teaching us to sit down, against zone that could be a different aspect of it too but we don't we don't want you to climb at all like we, right. like for, for us in the summer that's one thing we try and teach a lot oh go be aggressive yeah. we did this out of a star so a star is basically a wide bunch uh we have a point and we have these two receivers off the line of scrimmage this guy right here is going to run the puma route so he's going to be first on the release uh this receiver right here is the inside what he's going to do is he's going to keep an inside leverage and he's going to go outside and he's basically going to go rub the outside defender right here. So what we're going to see right here, this receiver starts to declare too early. In my opinion, I would have liked for him just to keep his hips and his shoulders uh, inside uh, the point of the star. So he starts declaring too early, but what we see right here is now this receiver right here. Okay. Uh, basically uh, he's going to go and split these two. And again, it kind of, 
works the same rule with the pressing corner and the space between these two defenders. If space is really tight, we can tell this guy to go ahead and take an inside release on this. So what we're going to see right here is basically uh, this receiver, he hesitates. Honestly, if he crossed face to this guy right here, there would be a collision between number 14 and this guy. And as we can see right here, basically this receiver, again, he starts to drift. I would like for him to stay a little bit more flat, but he's going to be the open receiver and we're going to target him. We'd like to put the ball just a little bit more in front of him. So here's an interesting thing that we did last season, and I'm going to give you a little bit more of just rub concepts. We're going to talk a little bit about offensive lineman play as well uh, and talk about that world a little bit more. So our, our sprint out game, what we do, like I had mentioned earlier, we tell the offensive lineman to do a full line slide opposite to where the quarterback is going to sprint. We tell the tailback, you're going to be in charge of blocking the end man on the line of scrimmage play side of the quarterback so our quarterback is going to sprint to the left side of the field okay our tailback basically right here he's going to take an outside target on the defensive end just to protect um, the sprint from the quarterback okay what we started to do is we said to our quarterbacks hey here's what's going to happen two receiver side we're going to give them rain off the sprint out but quarterback if you're getting a lot of pressure especially if you get edge pressure to the side of the back going to be really difficult so we said basically what you can do is you can abandon the sprint pop one or punch one right here with your fullback and play zephyr to this side of the field so basically we got two plays in one and what we're going to see right here the quarterback's not going to play i'm going to show you another example pretty soon but we got zephyr right here into the boundary and we have rain to the field there's a lot of team down south what they do is they'll tag a quick game concept uh back side of the sprint quarterback his footwork he'll still take a punch one step look and then sprint out and so I, I drew off inspiration from that Graham Harrell from USC when he was there he did that so I I, I saw it and I was like wow that's pretty interesting so we're gonna see right here this is the first clip that I showed you in the rain playlist you're gonna see right here the rain concept to the right side of the field and what you're gonna see right here to this three receiver side is Zephyr okay so we're gonna see interior pressure that's not a key for the quarterback to abandon but however, the team is playing, if you're sending six-man pressure, most typically you're going to get man-to-man. -man. There's some teams that play zone. However, it, would have, it wouldn't have hurt my feelings if the quarterback just took one step and he threw his Zephyr route right now. In 2019, again, we're going to start seeing more so in 2019 funky motions. <laughs> So we, we had mentioned, we, we had seen in the rain playlist, uh, a stack relationship with the receivers and they moved, they skated on the line of scrimmage horizontally. Uh, what we did in 2019, we did it with three receivers. Okay. So they, we call this a snake motion. So basically what they're going to do is they're going to move laterally down the line of scrimmage in this uh, shadow alignment. And what we're going to see, we're going to see a really good example of uh, a subtle stem to the outside. And we're going to see, this is against zone. Uh, typically Zephyr is something I like to call against man. However, it did work out for us on this play. So what we're going to see is our inside receiver right here. He, that's the guy that's going to run the Puma route. What we're going to see right here is number two. He's going to go ahead and split the halfback in the corner. Okay? And he does a good job of that. And what we see, I love this. This guy is in phase with the point or the number two receiver. Okay? If he declares his hips and his shoulders too subtly inside, that gives, uh, I believe his name is Marc-Antoine de Quala, the biggest halfback that I've ever seen in my life. Who had a, uh, uh, a tryout with the Green Bay Packers and now I think he's with the Alouettes okay? it influences those guys and they get wet and it opens up the space between this defender and this defender and what we're going to see right here is the quarterback's going to throw the ball right in between the two for a touchdown so honestly what we see here uh, in terms of uh, coverage wise is the Sam linebacker is going to get depth they're going to play a cover four week scheme. He's going to get depth to be part of the cover four scheme. The free safety is going to play to the weak side of the field. That's going to give us basically free access within the space. The next guy that's going to be able to cover it is the inside linebacker. And so what we see right here is he's conscious of the inside path of the inside receiver. Okay? And it opens up really that window on that zone right there. And that gives us that touchdown. <laughs> we did it uh, with another motion here against in the same game. Uh, we call this a zip motion where the wide out, he's going to zip across the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be the inside receiver. We had different sorts of Zephyr where the inside receiver, instead of him doing the Puma route, we gave him just a basic uh, spot route in the middle of the field. So basically, he's going to go occupy the middle of the field. And what we're going to see right here is number two, who initially was number three to the field. So we started three by two and went two by three. He's going to go and attack 
the inside shoulder of number nine. Our, our wide out right here is going to slip. Uh, however, it did help out with the timing of the play. And what we're going to see right here is the inside linebacker in this cut structure right here. Uh, this path of this receiver influences him just enough right here or where we can throw the ball in between those two defenders and get a game. So we were a little bit lucky, that's for sure. If the quarterback did throw the ball a little bit sooner, uh, I think I would have had less anxiety, anxiety. However, it did work out for us. This one hurt my feelings. <laughs> so we're going to look at the two receiver side. Uh, what we're going to see basically is uh, the number two receiver. Uh, what he does right here is he's going to go and attack this guy. And what he does he gets outside of him. We don't want that. We want him to stay inside of him, okay? We want, to, want him to stay inside of him. What we're going to see is open space into uh, in the interior, okay? If he did a good job of staying uh, inside of him and splitting these two, that would really inhibit this guy from really playing or pursuing the receiver. Uh, however, the receiver is going to drop the ball. The ball is just a little bit behind. If the ball is perfect, and again, we talk about marginal gains and marginal errors right here. I'm thinking in my head right here, this guy's going to catch the ball. He's going to split these two defenders, and now he's playing this guy right here. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. And then here's a great example. We don't throw it, but here's a great example of double press. So uh, <laughs> we're second and two, I believe, we're a second and goal. We're basically you know, on the, the doorstep of the, the, the end zone right here. Uh, Coach Lacombe, he gave me uh, the green light uh, to go for, to, to play three downs at this given moment. I wanted to be a little bit aggressive on the second down. Uh, so I wanted to call a pass play. I knew the defense was going to play cover zero in this situation. And so we're going to look at these two receivers. Basically what we're going to see right here is the number two. Okay, he's going to go and attack okay, the inside shoulder of this guy. What we're going to see from this receiver, I love his patience. I would have liked for him just to stretch outside just a little bit more to influence. But what you're going to see right here is he takes one step not a pick it's a rub okay and we're gonna go back inside okay now our field we are the, the i believe the only university in the country that still plays on natural surface uh and once we start playing in october on our home field good luck okay we're gonna see a really good example right here right now of this guy he's gonna run his slant route uh, we're going to see uh, the number two is going to go outside of the low defender and he's going to bend back inside on the seam. So I had mentioned that when we saw a low defender. So basically what's going to happen is he's going to go split these two defenders. He's going to notice that there's a high defender who's capping the slot fade space. So he's going to bend inside to basically play the seam. We don't throw to that side of the field. We play more so the, the three receiver side, but we do see that there's a potential to basically throw that seam. And we started getting a little bit funky with some of our movements. So we, what we did with those two routes is we traded them. We did a little exchange release. Okay, so what we're going to see right here is the wide out. Instead of giving him the slant, what he's going to do, okay, he's going to go be the vertical route. He's going to split the two, okay? We told this receiver right here, be patient, trail the outside hip, and then slant inside. So what you're going to see right here is in 2019, this team uh, played a lot of cover zero within this area of the field. And basically what we have is we have two receivers open. Now, the defense did a good job right here of batting down the ball. They played cover zero and they wanted to occupy offensive linemen to kind of free uh, defenders to the words the quarterback play our uh, protection rules. But what we see basically is if this defender was not there and he invested a little bit more into the pressure, we would have had basically him. Or if you look behind him right here, we have the seam route creeping into the back of the end zone. And again, this is going to be very similar. Uh, I'm just going to speed it up because we did do a freeze cadence. The quarterback, he did recognize cover zero off of that. We're going to look at these two receivers. I really like the patience from this receiver. I would have liked for the distribution or the distance between the, the two of these guys to be a little bit tighter. However, what you're going to see right here is basically he's going to trail the outside hip and he's going to give just a little jab step. And I love it. Boom. And so now this guy right here, uh, he's playing wide and outside. This team played a cover zero where they wanted to switch receivers. Uh, so uh, we wanted to play a lot of exchange releases. And what we see basically is this receiver is wide open right here just for an easy game. All right. It's going to be a little bit of controversial hot take here. Okay. So this is Super Bowl 49. It's the last play of the game right here. Okay. I understand everyone 
knows they should have ran the ball. Second and goal, 27's left on the clock. I understand that. But I do appreciate the aggressive call. Now, I don't know what their techniques are. I don't know how they taught the, the concept. We're going to see, I believe it's Jermaine Curse who's going to be the inside receiver. And I think this is Ricardo Lockett outside, okay? So, given the rules that I taught today, okay, here's something that this team could have done to kind of change the history of Super Bowl performances and possibly uh, records and everything like that. So, what we're going to see right here off of this play is, I don't know what Jermaine Chris is doing right here. He's going to take uh, the press uh, from this defender. And I know he had an extensive career in the CFL. I can't remember his name. Browner, I believe. So he's yeah. going to take, take a press right there. Okay. And you're going to see Ricardo Lockett. Basically, what he's going to do is he's going to take one step and he's going to come underneath. Now, in my personal opinion, if Jermaine Curse fights through this uh, attack from Browner and continues flat like this, I believe he's going to cut off the path from Butler. But history shows that it didn't happen out that way. So what we see from this side of the field is Curse is going to go take an inside. I just find that he gives up. I know I understand. I would have loved for him to use his hands just a little bit more, and I would have loved for him to take an inside path really to hold off this guy. Okay? Because what you see right now is basically Butler plays over top of that, and he's going to go and intercept the ball. It's a hot take. I'm going to get a lot of flack on Twitter for this. Yes, I agree. They should have ran the ball at that given moment. However, I do believe that uh, maybe with different coaching points, it could have been a little bit different. And what we're going to see from Tennessee, because we had mentioned about these, these twins alignment, that it's really, I think it's, I believe this is really a, form, a formation that's really a, a trend right now in American football. Uh, what we're going to look at is basically these two receivers. And so uh, this receiver basically against the press, he's going to take an inside release. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Yeah, he's going to take an inside release. And basically what he's going to do is he's going to take his defender uh, to the outside guy. I love the patience from the outside receiver. Just his presence outside holds this defender. And what you see right here is now this guy is trying to recover to play lock man on this guy. He has no chance. So the ball is a little bit high. And again, we talked about angles on slant routes. I would have loved for the angle to be a little bit more flatter from this receiver. Again, I'm not a coach for this team. Uh, however, I did find that this was a good concept. I do believe that this guy right here is he's continuing it inside a little bit too much. I would have loved for him just to be a little bit more vertical. However, uh, they do achieve what they want to get it's completion it's a first down uh, and so basically based off the defensive contour the offense had won this rep and that's it for me that's my presentation for you guys honestly that's that's all i had so uh, honestly i i hope you guys learned something off of that and i hope you don't have to take all of it take little tidbits i find personally when i do clinics when i hear terminology or certain little coaching points i go wow i'm going to use that because i believe that's going to help our athletes understand better the concept or the why from what we're doing yeah no that's amazing man you know we, we talked about to have the the super bowl stuff and the uh you know the the cost of it at the end too is great but you know thanks again for doing this you know justin coming on and uh thanks to coach butler for getting us connected on twitter yeah. um you know it's it's awesome i think we're all kind of in that phase of the year where we're looking for things that are going to help us, right. you know, and for me, again, when I'm looking at a concept, you know, all of us have some kind of slant concept in our playbook. All of us have some kind of smash concept. So I also like to kind of reevaluate, like, is there a better way to do the things I already do? Right. right? So I think th this becomes super useful stuff for, for right. any coach. And, and, you know, you went there for, you know, we, we said a little over an hour. I always know they're going to go a little longer <laughs> usually because, because <laughs> coaches want to do that but that was like the detail you know i've done a few of these where you know we've i've really felt hey like we got you know useful information for the and we've had tons of great guests right we got useful information the entire time and this was definitely one of those so thanks awesome. man appreciate it uh, and, my, my pleasure you know, the, the, this the little bit we got a, a mini tight bunch clinic we got a mini sprint out clinic you know, uh, there's tons in there, but we might have to bring it back to do some more tight. Bunch. For sure. I, I love that. And again, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll put in my Google drive, uh, I'll, I'll, a shareable folder for you guys and I'll, I'll download all the film that I have from these two playlists and as well, the, uh, the documents that I showed you guys. And I'll share that with all of you. The awesome. one thing about our documents, they're in French. 
if you need a little bit of help with some translation, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, uh, DM me. Uh, I, I love to talk ball. So I'm there, there for you, you guys. That's amazing. I, I could see some, you know, some high school coaches here in Ontario walking into their, uh, walking into their French, their, their grade 12 U French class. See if anybody can get those. <laughs> I'm going to take I'm a trying to do my best to translate them. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Lots of great comments in the chat. That was, that was one of, you know, my favorite ones we've done this in a while. So thanks again, coach. I'm going to take us off the live and, uh, you know, excited, sure. that, excited that we can probably, you know, at some point down in the future, we'll, we'll do this again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me.